So I'm Anirudh Sharma, as you read already over there. And uh, I like to make things, I like to build stuff, like a lot of tangible stuff, things that look, have a look and feel to them. Uh, and this goes beyond disciplines, so I don't have a discipline in mind. I, uh, the, the, the thing that I think is, uh, if you have a problem in mind, there can be a solution around it. This made me drop out of engineering in undergrad and left, and I left a PhD offer at MIT to move back to India uh, to solve problems, to st solve problems that make sense over here. Uh, so with this, I'd like to take you back to, to the year 2009. Uh, uh, how many of you are from Koramangala over here? Like, been to Koramangala, seen Koramangala, a lot of people. So back in 2009, I was living very close to this place called Forum Mall, very close to there. And I had this amazing job at HP Labs, Hewlett Packard. That was an amazing company back then. It's not doing good business right now. As a lab assistant. Uh, so my job was to listen to what R&D managers would say there and actually make stuff. So make stuff as in, they would say, oh, can you design this futuristic interface that does speech with sound? I said, this is fun. So I would code it up and make it. So that gave a lot of intellectual freedom to try what, uh, whatever ideas I wanted to try. And during that time, uh, so, what, so my, to, to, to avoid the, and most of you do actually, to avoid the traffic problem, I took up a room that was very close to the forum mall. So my office was on the uh, road over there, uh, near the Adugori Road. And I would just walk 300 meters and that was my office. So every day I would just get up at seven, go to the office and come back, just walk back. So it was an easy life that way. Uh, while I was working on a lot of futuristic technologies, uh, speech, multi-touch, gesture-based stuff, uh, what I felt was that it's amazing, but the moment I used to go back and, and walk back uh, to my home, there's a lot of visually impaired uh, schools around, visually challenged schools around Koramangala region, and I used to see people walk around the road and, and just wonder like what, what's, what's happening. And one fine day I was just walking down and there, I meet this guy who is holding this white cane in the, so I was not mindful of it. He says, can you tell me the directions to this sweet shop? I said, yeah, I'll go straight, take a left, then takes like two rights, and uh, that's there it is. And he, he just stood there dumbfounded, and he said, like, really? And so what he was expecting uh, me to do was to take him, and which I did eventually, which I understood that something is broken. I'm working on futuristic tech in a research lab, but still, over here, right outside the lab, there's this person standing with a white cane, but unable, probably with a smartphone in his pocket and Google Maps, but unable to find his way from one place to another. So I went back to my friends and I told them about the incident. They said, you should probably step into the shoes of the blind and see it from their angle. So I took that very literally. And uh, what I realized was uh, something is broken. Uh, we have, all of us have smartphones probably in our pockets right nowadays. Even if it's not a smartphone, and pro probably all of you right now have phones on a silent mode, and if somebody calls you, it will probably vibrate. So this sense of vibration, the sense of touch and vibration and feeling is something that makes you experience uh, information without looking at it, right? Like you can see a call, you can feel a call coming, you can set vibration patterns that if a call from my mom comes and you vibrate two times, a call from my Mother, uh, from my father comes, they probably vibrate three times in a pulses of three, 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 like a Morse code. So this is what I realized. So I said, let's move this sense of vibration from the pockets a little bit down into your shoe. And could that be used for navigation? So we had this very conceptual kind of idea back in 2009. I talked about this with my manager. Manager said, why are you thinking about it? You should try to make it. So I went back to my lab, uh, came up with this very simple, with uh, a very simple uh, schematic. Uh, for those of you who can't see, this is, I'm showing an insole over here uh, with uh, four vibrators, the same vibrational motors that you have in your phone that make it vibrate and put it inside the shoe. So the, all, the idea, basic idea is the front one is for the front, back one is go back, take a left and take a right. And can we use this sort of a mechanism for, for letting people feel the directions that they need to go into? Uh, that's a microcontroller that does the computation and everything. So the idea is simple, making a shoe talk to you. And why a shoe? Uh, so I went back to my lab, suggested to my couple of friends. He said, you can actually do Google. Has anybody, you, a lot of you use Google Maps, right? Like turn by turn navigation. You know, in, in, in taxis, you'll hear this thing. Hey, hello. So uh, in taxis, you'll hear that thing, take right, take left. So my friend said, can you give 
the visually challenged that phone. So I took that phone with the earphones. He said, are you stupid or what? I'm using my sense of hearing to, uh, to make a spatial uh, you know, uh, definition of the surroundings. If I block my sense of hearing, it's, you're going to probably land me up in a ditch. What kind of uh, a maker are you? So I took that very personally. I said, let's get into haptics and, and the, the sense of feeling and vibrations. I came up with this sketch. All I did was, I was still working. I put this up on the internet. Uh, and on the internet, by the virtue of its simplicity, it got viral. A lot of people picked it up. And a lot of blogs picked it up. Uh, was featured on Time magazine and a lot of these places. For the first time, I tasted international uh, recognition. I had dropped out from college previously, so you can imagine the kind of underdog feeling I was living with. So that was good. And on the side, what happened was uh, a lot of people started writing to me. They would write like, hey, Anirudh, uh, can, I, can I buy this for my parents? Can we do this? Uh, can, can I give it to my sister? Can I, can I give this thing to uh, one of my friends who is visually challenged? I said, no. This is for my own pleasure. I'm a maker. This is probably my own art piece. But uh, I haven't thought about how will I bring this to the market. So it was an ugly prototype back then. Like, beautiful for me, but it had wires hanging out, battery packs. Like, if you, if you probably walk, this, walk with this in an airport, you'll probably be caught. Like, there'll be circuits inside your shoes. And uh, this, so I went back to my manager and said, uh, uh, I'm in HP, can HP make something like this? He said, HP is a printing company, they'll probably never get into the business of making shoes, you should probably quit your job. So after six months, that was the only job I did ever. After six, seven months, I quit my job and uh, uh, started looking for uh, people uh, to work with. Uh, I am from Rajasthan originally, but I don't have, I'm not Marwari, I don't know how to do business. So a lot of technical advice was, you should file patents on this. I was like, how do you file patents? I went there. You have to hire a patent lawyer. You have to find money to file the patent. So I was like, how would I need? I'll need like four or five lakh rupees. So during that time, I had made a lot of friends, uh, really challenged friends who would come to my place, hang out with me, and they would be like, uh, dude, we have all the support, but we don't have the money. So I said, uh, how do we find the money? He said, you should find visually impaired people who are rich, maybe. So we, <laughs> so we, we would cold call NGOs and like, hey, can you connect with somebody visually impaired person with like cash on him? and who can support. So we would meet a lot of people on, on this behalf, and luckily on one meetings, I was put in touch with Crispian, who became my partner, and he said, let's take it out there, let's start something around it. And for four years, uh, we built teams around it, we experimented with, I mean, I don't have a great sense of fashion myself, I'm a geek, but if you're making something that goes to the hands of any person out there, it has to feel, look, and work well. So understanding the whole human experience. So we were hired fashionists, designers, engineers, working at the same time, making the thing look, feel, work well. Uh, uh, eventually, after four years, these are the kind of emails I received. I'm a couple slides behind, I'm sorry. So people would write such emails, and this made me eventually uh, move out of my job. And, uh, and so started going out, taking the prototypes, showing it to people. This was a conference back in Delhi. Uh, and they the kind of excited. And eventually, after uh, uh, three, I would say, uh, two years of leaving the job, we developed some systems and we thought of taking it out there and spreading a wider message. So this was the kind of video we did to share the idea across. All the people acting in this video are visually challenged.
put this campaign uh, around. And uh, so after a lot of interest, Crispin worked very hard on this. We, the whole team worked, and we made something that's slick. And what we eventually observed that the excitement for this is not just from the visually challenged, it was from the entire community. Uh, people who are sighted, who can see, like us, uh, also wanted it. So we said, how do we make it uh, work for everybody uh, across uh, boundaries? So this is an insole that just goes inside an issue that you want to wear, and it will vibrate and tell you the directions that you want to move in. And it will also do one of those uh, activity tracking things for those of you who want to lose weight. So the next campaign that we did was around we, we moved away from the idea of just making it for the visually impaired. We said we'll have the technology, it'll work beyond domains, but make it more of a lifestyle thing out there. So the next thing that we did was more on a modern, young lifestyle side of things. So how would, how would a shoe in daily life of a youngster probably help them find directions for when they're on a bike, when they want to go from one place to another, have scenarios, around it and yeah. Part of the time, the major it, uh, iterative development was happening there. I was back in Boston at MIT and I graduated. I finished and I started my PhD and then I realized that uh, academia, like traditional academia, I don't want to be a professor, so let's move back to India. I moved back to India. The moment I moved back in, I realized uh, there's, uh, so this is another uh, domain that things happened in. I moved back and the moment I realized that, that my shirts are getting dirty much faster. There's so much pollution around us. And what we realized, if you apply the same kind of thinking that you applied in the visually challenged domain, what if you can repurpose the pollution that causes you asthma and so many health problems into something that you actually use on a daily basis? So what we did was, around this project, was take a regular pollution that is generated from exhausts, from cars, capture it into a little contraption that would, that would uh, keep it, mix it with very simple compounds, and generate printing in order. Like most of you use printers that you would print things with. How would you actually capture the pollution that will eventually cause you cancer, asthma, and convert it to printing? So this would capture the pollution and supply that pollution mixed with the compounds to convert it into ink. And now what you have in your hand is a printer that, uh, that can print with pollution. Over here is a handheld uh, printer. right now of students, if you find, go to Delhi and if you find students like, go, like lying down beneath the cars and collecting pollution, probably it's us, it's a team over there. So they're actually converting ink out of this. So the message that I want to leave you here with that uh, it's not about the technology, it's about the problems that are out there and finding the solutions that already work in other domains. I didn't invent a shoe, shoes have been there for ages and mix and match and combine them cleverly into domains and that can solve the problems for you. That's all, thank you.
So here we are at the end of uh, IS 2015 and um, 